grew up on Dukes of Hazard. Grew up watching Fall Guy. Shows like that, and like when I was watch those, I was more interested in the vehicle. You know, the Fall Guy truck was one of those just like, oh my God, I that's what I want to have when I grow up. I'm Justin Berry uh, from Tomball, Texas, and I am part of Excessive Car Club. Man, it's my love for cars. I don't know, it kind of started out. I didn't really have an influence, per se, a family member. It started out just probably like most little kids, Hot Wheels. And I can remember just at a very young age looking at cars driving around and thinking, that's that is really cool. I want one of those. I've always been very mechanical. I've always, I'd take anything apart, even at a young age. You know, I would take all my toys apart and then have to throw half of them away because I couldn't put them back together. <laughs> kind of like a lot of truck builders do nowadays. Uh, my very first vehicle I ever owned, I was 15 years old. Um, and my mother saved up enough money and bought me a 1970 model Chevrolet C10. Of course, it wasn't the nicest C10 in the world but I was like a kid in a candy store. You know, I had all these envisions for it that I was gonna do. I was 15 when I got it. Uh, so the, of course the day I turned 16, I was, I was ready to drive. Made a trip to the local Pet Boys and bought a nice set of um, 15 inch 10 hole chrome wheels and put on it. Of course I didn't have very much money so everything was done very on a budget. You know, I'm not real for sure exactly what made me want to go more like the the lowered custom car route. I don't know, probably I'm I'm 45, so probably a lot of people my age um, grew up on Dukes of Hazard, grew up watching Fall Guy, shows like that. And like when I was watch those, I was more interested in the vehicle. You know, the Fall Guy truck was one of those just like, oh my God, I'll, that's what I want to have when I grow up. Probably, you know, I, I grew up in a small town. There wasn't a whole lot of, of mini trucking type, type, you know, lower trucks. There wasn't a whole lot of that going on. So magazines probably played a big part of like me, like that would be kind of cool to do. The 70 model Chevrolet, I ended up selling it. I wanted a mini truck. And so I bought a 93 S10. Back in that time, I, I, I kind of, I grew up way more, I say I grew up, but I turned into way more of uh, the low rider scene. Uh, so I put some 1510s, you know, wire wheels and um, a camper with full of speakers. Got a lot into, me and a friend of mine, he had a shop at his house, so we started. Uh, I started doing some painting when I was about 20. Didn't really know much about it, but I knew there was a paint store in town, and I couldn't afford even, you know, what a paint job cost back in the early 90s. I couldn't afford that, um, so I just started doing it myself. So turned into doing that kind of stuff to kind of fund what I wanted to do around. 2000, um, I bought a 2000 Chevrolet C30 Dually. My first, you know, drove it around for a while, said I wasn't going to do anything with it. I was just going to drive it. It wasn't a couple weeks later, of course, we had it in the shop and we put a drop kit on it, you know, just a 5.7 drop. I was going to do hydraulics on it. And at that point in time, I think. For just from my perspective, just maybe it's because I was in a different scene, but the bags and the this scene started to get bigger. Heat wave, heat wave was a huge, you know, early 2000s heat wave shows were huge. So I had buddies um, in the town I grew up with that were getting more into that. And I had a friend of mine talk me into bagging the dually and stuff. He's like, you'll love it. So, um, I had it bagged. I didn't do it myself. I didn't know much about it. 
I could put hydraulics on anything, but I didn't know anything about bags. So I had it done. I actually sent the truck to Houston to have it done. I did that, and of course, I was, that's, then I was going to leave it alone, but I didn't. Um, it turned into like a full build. Um, and it was actually uh, featured, uh, I don't even remember now, maybe 2009, 2008. It was actually featured in street truck, or no, sport truck. Uh, so yeah, I had that for a while. That turned into a full build. I'd always, I think anybody, I don't know, you know, some people will tell you that they don't. They're not in it for trophies or whatever, but I know growing up and looking at all the magazines, we're talking about the magazines, how they're disappearing. Can remember going to your local Walmart or your local grocery store. And I was a kid that just, I'll be back, mom, I'll be over here at the magazines. So I'm, you know, and thinking one day I want to have, I want to build that. I want to be in the magazine, you know, that was just, so when it first happened, you know, I, I still have the magazine to this day that my first show coverage, you know, I got my little squared picture in the bottom. <laughs> from, that's me, that's me, I'm, I'm in the magazine. Yes. And then when the truck actually, my other truck actually got featured, um, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was tickled to death. This, this is going back when I was younger with the 70 model Chevrolet. Uh, one reason I sold it. I look back now and wish I hadn't. That's, now at my age, that is a truck that I would die for, to have back. Um, I was young. Um, truck was always breaking down on me. It was a 70 model Chevrolet. Um, it wasn't a rebuilt. It was a 70 model Chevrolet. Um, but I had an accident. I was getting ready to, um, coming home from school or something. I don't remember what it was exactly. And I remember coming home and had to started getting a vibration. I was like, well, that's weird. So I pulled into the driveway and our driveway was pretty steep. Well, I just get out of the truck and I crawl under it just to see, just to look. I didn't have no tools. I didn't have no jack. I still had my school clothes on. And um, I kind of reached under, was just kind of looking, and I reached and I grabbed the drive shaft and just kind of gave it a shake. Well, U-joint was broke was the problem. The U-joint was giving. So when I gave it the shake, the drive shaft completely hit the floor. Concrete driveway. So I'm under it on a fairly steep graded driveway. Um, it was lowered, so I was kind of slid under it pretty good. I couldn't get out in time. There was no way for me to, you know, my arms were over my head, laying up under there. And um, it took me for a good little ride up under the truck, probably, probably 30 yards or so before it kind of spit me out the front. I spent some time in the hospital. Um, and then after that was why I kind of, I sold it. My daily driver, is a 2016 the Chevrolet, three quarter ton, eight inch lift, 22 inch American Force wheels. I don't get it muddy, I don't wanna wash it. I've never had a daily driver that I didn't eventually do something to. I think it's because I don't like, not that I necessarily want to stand out in a crowd, but I don't like, I don't like just the normal thing that everybody else is driving. Um, you know, I look next to you and somebody else is driving the same gray Honda Accord that you are. It's like, I don't know, it's just kind of, it may get a little different, but, so that's kind of, yeah, I can't leave anything alone. This is my uh, 85 Chevrolet Crew Cab C30 Dually. Like I said, I, yeah, I had the other Dually and um, I ended up moving to Tomball, which is a lot bigger area than where I'm from, the surrounding metropolitan area. Um, I moved here, I didn't know, I didn't know a soul, didn't know anybody, nobody knew me. I had a guy give me a job, you know, of course, go in and interview and yeah, I'm a painter. And I've been doing this long enough that I hear that a lot. 
from people. I'm a painter and I'm just like, sure you are. I had to prove it. And I had a guy, off, you know, he, he gave me a shot. This was a small shop with me having custom vehicles. My, my circle of friends started getting a little bigger, you know, just meeting people. Um, I would go to a lot of shows. I ended up getting introduced or what to um, Corey Scott, Custom Works. Talked with him for a little while. Well, he ended up giving me a job. Um, he needed a painter. I was like, hey, it's right up my alley, you know. I worked for Corey for about six, a little over six years. Maintained an awesome friendship with him. Other than my own personal stuff, I'd been, you know, I've been painting mainly collision stuff. Um, and I remember the first week I started working at Corey's. And um, it's like, hey, here's this C10. This is so-and-so C10. Um, we need you to paint it. I was like, okay, do my thing or whatever. Well, I didn't really know them that well yet. You know, to them, I was just an employee. I wasn't quite the friend yet. And um, well, come to find out, it was a friend of theirs truck and the truck made the cover that I painted. And it was another one of those things like, I'm like, Dude, this is an awesome job. You know, this is a really cool job to have. Like, I've built something that made it in the magazine, but now I'm working on, I'm doing other people's stuff, you know, and it made the cover. And I'm like, this is my first cover truck. It's not my personal one, but this is my first cover truck. Uh, so it was cool. So I worked there for six years. Well, over the six years, I did quite a few, you know, feature cover vehicles that come out of the, you know, a shop like Corey's. Me working there at Corey's and getting to know Scott, Scott Rupp and, you know, more friends with everybody or kind of in that circle of friends that they had made me want to actually build my current truck I have now. My other truck that I built, I mean, it was a newer truck. So yes, I mean, I painted it and bagged it, but I'd never really done just a complete build, but I love Dooley's. So I searched and searched and I ended up, I ended up buying one. Took it back to my shop that I had at home and tore it apart. Friends come over and they just look at me and they go, you're not gonna do that. You're never gonna finish that. There's no way. Um, did most of the stuff myself, I mean, they come over and help me, you know, occasionally, but did most of it myself. So they're like, I bet you don't put that back together. Bet you that dog, you're gonna throw that away. Well, over the next four years, this is about what it took, I got it put back together. Um, built a lot of it at, like at my personal shop that I had. Got ready to paint it. Took it up to work, to Custom Works. I was working there at the time. Corey let me paint it there because he, big, nice paint booth, you know. Um, it's a lot of truck to try to paint in a, in a garage. That's kind of what inspired me to build that truck was just being around those guys and seeing the quality of stuff that like Corey would build. And I'm just like, I want to build something like that. So the truck is actually, it's, it's bodied on 22s, the frame, the guy that I bought it, bought it from, the frame was actually in, wasn't in bad shape. Truck was from up north. Well, I ended up buying actually two other trucks. So I, I really built this truck out of three. It's easier to, especially here in, the, in East Texas, you can come up here and find these trucks all day long sitting in somebody's field. Basically with the original truck I bought, I kept the frame and pretty much threw the rest away. The body is all other donor trucks. It's got, uh, the cab is actually off of an 88 that I bought. Um, the last year model, they made that body style. So it was the nicest, it was the nicest, right. um, as far as being in shape wise. Um, nowadays, everybody goes out and buys the nice dually to ride around because they're nice trucks. Nobody went out and bought a square body dually back then to ride around in. 
They were work trucks, so none of them are in good shape. There's a ton of labor hours into that truck. Obviously, I wanted a custom truck. I still wanted it to look somewhat original looking. Um, I didn't want crazy graphics, didn't want too much, but we did decide to, we suicided the back doors. I actually, one of the coolest features, the mods on it, I think that catch most people kind of by surprise is all of the lights, all the running lights, um, the front fenders, the rear fenders, across the rear tailgate, the cab lights across the roof, they're all flush mounted um, LEDs. Anywhere there was original factory light, there is now a flush mounted LED. Kind of my inspiration to build the truck was just, you see a lot of guys nowadays, you know, they're, they're spending money, they're going down and buying a $80,000 F-250, raising it up really high or, you know, laying it down, but the truck itself looks original. And so that was the kind of the plan when I built the truck is I, I like, I want this truck to almost look like I just bought it and said, you know what, I'm gonna lay it out and put big wheels on it. But I didn't want the original trim. Uh, the truck actually started out as a 79. Some of my buddies give me a hard time because the 85, actually that is not the original trim for the truck. It's more of the 79 trim. But I tell them, well, the truck started out as a 79 just because I did a front end swap on it. Anybody who's been doing this long enough, and especially anybody around the Houston area, spring, to, well, who do you call? You call Pat Maxwell. So I had Pat come over and airbrush the trim. When people see it, most people don't even realize that it's painted. This truck has actually been finished um about seven years it's it's looked kind of like what you see it now i don't drive it as much now as i probably would like to um i tell everybody and anybody i'm sure anybody who has a body truck you don't drive them you operate them that's what i say you operate these vehicles these you don't drive it uh that's my daily i can drive it i I don't dodge potholes. I don't worry about pulling in the parking lot. Um, but we were driving it, I forget. It was too turkey drag, but it was back when they were still in Tyler. Decided, you know what? Me and Scott were up. He had his little mini truck and we was like, let's drive him to Tyler. Three hour drive. Well, we're cruising there and we go through construction where they are just resurfacing the road. So they put the tar down in the rocks and then they let it just stick like glue to the road. By the time we got to Tyler, the Dooley hips were trashed from all the rock chips flinging up. I mean, they were peppered trash. And I was like, that's why you don't drive it to car shows. Because um, now I have to go back and fix that. I'm bored with it, uh, but I, I'm not gonna get rid of it. I think it's one of those trucks that I've built that I'm, I'm really proud of, and I hate to see it go somewhere and that whether it disappears or it shows up and makes me really sad that it looks like that now. I have plenty of space at my house and the truck can sit and I'm not gonna get rid of it, you know. My son is 15 and he's getting really close to that age where this is, he's showing more interest. At some point in time, if he wanted it, I'd love to give it to him. But with that being said, I'm kind of bored with it. So it'll probably be within the next year the truck will come back apart. You can meet people doing this and like have lifelong friendships even though it turns in, it's not about the vehicles anymore. As we get older, you know, we look back and we're talking about the magazines kind of going away. Um, things, things are changing. I hope this doesn't disappear. Like I said, you build friendships and you can bring your kids and get them interested in 
hopefully keep them out of trouble. I was on a different path when I started the painting. Um, and here it is 25 years later, I'm still painting. I'm probably gonna be, I can, I can picture myself, I'm probably gonna be one of those old guys um, at some point in time, whether it's my son or his friends, like I'm gonna be the, man, I know this old man that, that does cars, builds cars, you know, and I'll probably have to do this till I'm, till I just can't. It's the way I kind of see it happening. I mean, I don't know, maybe if I win the lottery, I wouldn't do it, but. <laughs> but then you might. You have a bigger shop. I, I might, I just might have more, yes, I might just have a bigger shop with more stuff. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also visit builttocruise.com. I would like to say, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My little guy here. <laughs> we'll save those for later. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll find out we needed those, <laughs> right? At some point, I came out here so be quiet. Be a little more quiet. And everybody's like, "Oh, let me go down this road." Yeah, I want to see what's going on. Yep. Yeah, out here doing donuts right around that tree right there. And we drive through. You know, me and my son, we're always looking. You're you're driving through the country and you're looking. You're like, "Oh, look at that over there. That's out in the field. There's grass around. I bet we, you know." But yeah, you know, if you stop, they're not going to sell it to you. No. Never. They're just like, nope, we're going to, my, my dad's going to build it. It's like, no, he's not. It's been sitting there for, look at it. It's not. Is there going to even be a classic vehicle anymore? We, we had the discussion like 25 years from now, somebody's going to open a bar and go, oh my God, it's a 2002 Prius. Yeah. That's what it's like. I, this is my, this is my happy place.